Hey guys, MC Stu here. I'm going to be going over a uh, Tetrion build per request um, from somebody on Facebook. Uh, I'm going to be working around uh, the um, low buy set, the advanced diffuse Tetrion uh, set. Um, it's going to be a mixture of mission reward and uh, that set as well as uh, a couple other things. Um, so this is directed more at this particular person and some of the things that he has shown me that he has. Um, there's obviously quite a few ways to go about building this. Um, he's doing it on the uh, Ferengi warship. Um, so again, I'm making this video to uh, make it a little bit easier to communicate my suggestions to, to him in uh, getting this put together. Uh, so I'll jump right in. Um, I'll have this link uh, posted for the uh, skill planner. Um, I'm just going to start going through it and then talk about some of the other potential options um, that can be used in place of what I have in the skill planner here. Um, so he has the he actually has the four piece uh, set, which also includes the um, dual beam bank. Um, I'm going to leave that out and focus more on cannon build. Um, and here is the console for that as well. Um, I'm also going to be referencing uh, my son's account. Um, he actually has a Tetrion build, so I've been kind of leaning on that a little bit just for uh, some, some help in putting this together. Um, so up front, uh, we have Torpedo um, from that set, as well as the Dual Heavy Cannon. These two open slots um, you can pretty much fill with any Tetrion Cannon you want. I personally recommend the just dual, not heavy. Um, you get a little faster uh, firing rate out of that. When I parse these, they they really come out to being about the same. Um, the dual heavy does a little more damage, but the uh, not dual heavy or just dual cannons uh, fire faster, and so you end up with about the same DPS out of those. Um, so you can pretty much use anything in here you want to fill these with that you have access to or um, you know what you can afford on the exchange on my uh, kids account here um, we have some exchange items that that he had got some crafted stuff um, he was also using some diffuse from the uh, the lock boxes um, I'm a big fan of making uh, you know the, the free to play I have a free to play account um, I also have my main account which I've spent some money on but I, I always like to lean towards you know what what can I do with uh, you know with nothing or, or for free um, these cannons here uh, piercing tetrion dual cannons um, are mission reward uh, their proc is is pretty good and um, the proc doesn't take up a modifier space which is nice um, these come from and let me see if I can find it here. Come from the Wasteland arc. And sorry, I'm trying to fit both of these things here on my screen. So uh, let's see. Available. Installation 18. So the only problem is they come at Mark 11. And they come in rare, not very rare. So they do take some upgrading. Um, but they are free. You can rerun the mission and get additional ones. So these are a nice free option um, Or there's plenty of stuff on the exchange or crafted um, that will will get the job done uh, So that's front weapons um, The person is currently using the full set um, the Zinkethi set um, This is also a mission reward um, I would suggest going and replacing the Deflector with the uh, fleet colony deflector and uh, the reason for that is going to give you quite a bit of crit chance crit severity It's an excellent uh, Deflector it's pretty much the go-to for all the high-end DPS stuff and, and also just to be clear that this person's wanting to get um, you know get his damage up a little bit and uh, So, you know, we're not putting together, you know, the highest end build here But something that's going to make it to where, uh, you know, you can have a little more fun going through these uh, TFOs um the three piece that would be left is still going to give you the the two piece obviously which is i believe resistance kinetic resistance rating and then you're also going to get that uh shield cap and the tetrion damage boost from that so you're still going to get the, the the benefits out of that you will lose out on the uh 20 uh turn rate but I think it's worth it in terms of wanting to bump that damage going with, with this deflector here. 
um, you can get quite a bit of extra um, critical chance and severity out of this. Uh, so that's that set. Um, I'm a big fan of, um, you know, especially on the you know mid-range budget end, using the board kinetic cutting beam along with the um, the console that goes with it. Uh, when that procs, you get the firing cycle haste, and then on the actual console itself, um, you're going to get critical chance and severity out of that, uh, as well as additional weapons power and control, which probably isn't a real big deal. But again, that critical chance and severity is is huge, and this is a fairly cheap item to get from your uh, your Omega rep. Um, again, free items. Um, these weapons here, and I have them on his ship as well, these are uh, a mission reward, and they are from Butterfly. I normally will use the console on most of my builds that aren't aux to bat, because again, um, depending on where you set your auxiliary, you get quite a bit of critical chance and severity, as well as a uh, hull cap and additional um, auxiliary power. Um, which helps itself as well. A two-piece um, of this and either one of these weapons. These weapons are interchangeable, so this doesn't count as a three-piece set with the console. Um, the three-piece set would be the warp core, which we're not using um, from that. One of these weapons and then the uh, the console. But the, uh, the two-piece does give you a Tetrion boost. We're on ground, so it's not showing it right now, uh, the full amount. So in space, I believe that's more like plus 15, I believe. Uh, and they're, uh, they're decent weapons, um, and I went with doing the Omni along with that, number one, because it's another free weapon, um, but with this particular ship, we have quite a few of um, you know tactical bridge officer slots, and so we want to be able to fill those with things that will will give us some benefit. I find if I go, you know, like on this particular build, it's just all cannons plus this, but if that wasn't there, um, you know, on his ship, I mean, I basically have cannon scatter volley. I have um, attack pattern beta. Um, you know, there's only three or four things before I'm kind of running out of stuff that's going to be useful. So um, if I can kind of mix some of that, um, then, you know, th that lets me use more of the capability of the ship. In this particular build, uh, he's going to have a torpedo, cannons, and one omnidirectional beam. So we can utilize beam overload to fill one of those slots and get some extra damage out of that. Um, last weapon in the back is a uh, rep item. This is available through, I think the Undine rep. And let's just take a look here, counter command. You do have to have this at level six before it becomes available to you. Yes. So it's available in Phaser and Tetrion. So um, it's a fairly inexpensive item to get. Um, you can utilize something else. Where this piece is going to shine is if you also use the console here. It's a universal console. And having both of these items equipped is going to give you a, another damage boost. And let's just take a look at that here. And it's going to look small, but it is a uh, it is a Cat 2 boost. So um, let's see, 2P, so it's a 7.5 bonus. Um, so and if you don't know the difference between bonus or Category 2, that is being applied not just to the base damage, but it's being applied to the base damage plus all of your tactical console. So basically it adds up all of your consoles, anything else boosting it, that's a cat one, and then it applies the cat two on top of all of that. So a cat one, um, like these consoles here are a cat one. I've done testing, I mean, it's not real hard. You go into space, pull this off, look and see what you know your, your damage from a particular weapon it is, put it back on. And then if you do the same with this combination here um, to enable and disable the uh, the cat 2 boost you get from this um, it is actually ends up being a little bit more that you gain than you would from a cat 1 um, at 30 what 39.4 percent so it's a pretty big boost um, I didn't put it in this build um, just because I, I, I don't know or think this person has these items I wanted to bring them up so he could see them um, in the meanwhile 
I would be using. And there's quite a few things you could actually put here. This is kind of one of my go-tos for survival. Um, that's the reinforced armament. Um, it, it gives you a, a good amount of uh, survivability. Um, so th that's why that's there. But this is kind of an open slot. You can use quite a few different things here. You could even replace that potentially with, uh, with the sticky web console. Uh, which will give you quite a bit of Tetrion damage, 25%, and then some additional auxiliary as well as the clicky. Um, so that's also an option to replace this. If I had you know, everything in my wish list uh, for the reinforced armament, I would have the console from the rep to give me the two piece for this, and then I would probably replace this item here with the sticky web. Um, so, but let's keep just moving through um, what's in the skill planner. Um, so I skipped over the uh, devices. Um, some of this is personal preference, but some of it's a must-have. So energy amplifiers, you need to have them. It's just a massive boost to your damage output. Um, the, uh, uh, how do we say that, Duranium Surplus, that's going to be uh, speed, and it'll give you uh, damage resistance. Um, so I'll tend to use these um, if I you know get, need to get around the map a little bit faster. Um, or I'll use them in some cases if I want to boost the, uh, the defensive rating. Although against NPCs, that's not really anything at all. So um, the other item, my kid doesn't have this unlocked on his account, but it is going to be the reactive armor uh, catalyst. This is also a mission reward. And it comes from, and I just looked at this, so I should know it off the top of my head, but don't. Uh, it's in the Iconian arc, and I believe it's Broken Circle. Okay, I am wrong about that. It is not Butterfly. It's not Midnight. Or was it Broken Circle? It is Broken Circle. So and once you get this, this will give you a couple of them, but it also unlocks the ability for you to craft those. And uh, they're extremely cheap. It only takes, I think, like a minute to make five of them. But I generally keep these in stock, and uh, they, they'll give you huge amounts of um, whole regen. So it's, uh, you know, if you're starting to die, taking a lot of damage, just click on that, and that'll uh, boost you up uh, pretty significantly. And uh, I do not have the stats on me because my kid does not have those on his account. Uh, so those are the uh, the devices that I'd recommend. Um, the other one that, that's a good one is the subspace field modulator. I generally don't recommend this to everybody because it's in it's a mission reward, but it's in missions that are no longer in the arc. They are still available, but it's kind of complicated to explain how to get to it, and I'll have to put together a video on uh, on doing something like that. Um, but in any case, if you do have this or know how to get it, um, I certainly recommend having having this as well. Um, next item, so we went over the reinforced armaments. Next item is going to be the, uh, the Trillium D. This is also a mission reward, and uh, this is, again, another staple in, in most of my builds for survivability if you need it. Um, so it gives you a huge amount of damage resistance, hull capacity, uh, shield capacity, and it also gives you additional auxiliary power, uh, which will help you with this console down here, which we'll get into in a minute. Uh, actually, we'll get into it now. Uh, this is the uh, temp uh, temporal disentanglement. And it uh, the higher your auxiliary power is, the higher uh, of a bonus or boost it'll give to your critical chance and severity. Um, gives you the, uh, the maximum shield cap, as well as auxiliary power as well. It's great, great console. If you're using Ox to Bat, though, this is pretty much useless other than the survivability aspects of it, and in that regard, there's better options. So if you're running an Ox to Bat, um, which the, the person that I'm making this for is not, but if you're watching this and you are, um, th this is kind of a useless console, because as soon as you transfer all the power out of auxiliary, um, you lose all of your critical chance and severity that you get from this. Uh, next item is the, the Borg uh, console, the assimilated module from the rep. It's cheap, it's available, I believe, once you complete uh, the tier one in that, so it's pretty easy to get, and it's, uh, it's pretty inexpensive. Um, it gives you the um, critical chance severity. Uh, we discussed that just a few minutes ago, so uh, pretty self-explanatory. And then the two-piece on that um, gives you a chance for 
weapons power cost reduction. Um, they give you firing cycle haste, you know, firing energy weapons. So extra weapons power, weapons uh, drain resistance, and weapons power cost. So um, when you're firing all your weapons, especially under you know if you have beam overload going along with your scatter volley, that's gonna you're you're gonna see that power bar for your weapon start to drop and. and the, when that drops down, that that's a significant reduction in power um, or in damage output. So when this procs at 500% weapons cost, I mean that's basically like you're not going to have any. So that's that's huge if that's going off. So pretty decent two piece, and the two consoles even on their own, or console and weapon on their own, are are decent as well. Very good. Uh, next item, this is another uh, mission reward, and my, yeah, my kid has that as well. Um, so this, the main reason for it is more Tetrion damage. Um, I would definitely go with the Sticky Web in place of this. Um, Sticky Web currently, I think, is about uh, 7 mil on the exchange. So if you have 7 mil, buy this and use it instead of, of that guy. So Sticky Web in place of this. If you don't have it or for the time being, run the mission. It's free. And uh, you'll get the extra t uh, Tetrion damage and the, um, what else does it have, uh, shield and drain. So not bad. And that comes from, and I'm going to butcher, I'm, I don't even think I'm going to try and say the name of the episode. I'll just show you. It comes from New Frontiers. I think it's the last, last one. Yes. Captain Neff. Yep, here it is. So you just run through that, and you can uh, grab that item as well. Uh, okay, so lastly, for tactical consoles, um, number one rule, and I see this all the time, you want your tactical consoles to all be boosting the main energy type that you have. So I don't care if you're running a torpedo up front and you know everything else is phaser or whatever. Forget about the torpedo and run all phaser, or all, in this case, tetrion. I just kind of randomly put these in, um, so you'll have to look at you know which kind you want to use depending on what you want to buff more of you know your critical chance or critical severity. Um, so the um, the locators will uh, give you a critical chance, and the and the uh, exploiters will give you more critical severity. Um, you also could look at doing uh, one of the tactical consoles from the fleet colony um, those are gonna be the I think the, the proto matter uh, tactical consoles and um, they come in um, so they basically come in two well they give you two boosts so like uh, on this particular one and I, I don't think my kid has any of those um, but they would give you a boost to whatever damage type and then the secondary boost it gives you is gonna be to something else like kinetic damage um, and then they also have a proc that gives you um, hull regen. So if you have a problem dying, and this is true on any build, um, they're great for tanking, but uh, you can drop one or two in those and um, it, it, they'll just go off at, at random and um, d does a good job at helping regen your hull and keeping you alive. Um, if you don't have enough fleet credits or access to these, I mean, I would just save up, start getting them, and in the meanwhile, use just regular... Um, uh, tactical consoles that will boost uh, Tetrion and Tetrion pulse generators so if you don't have any of these the first thing I would do is, is go to the exchange or craft five of those so you want all of your tactical consoles to be boosting that there are a couple exceptions to that um, for instance like this one here and this person I don't think has their uh, discovery rep uh, filled out all the way yet. I would definitely work on that. There's a lot of good stuff in there, not just gear, but also on the personal, uh, personal, um, uh, what is it? Um, not the traits, but the, yeah, the space rep stuff like uh, Tyler's duality is uh, is very good. Torpedo from that uh, is real good, but this console, I'm pretty much putting it on everything, and uh, it's giving a pretty pretty large boost to uh, critical chance, which is basically twice what you would get from a uh, locator. And then you're also getting a, a huge amount of shield penetration um, when it's fully upgraded. It's still good right out the box, but it's, uh, it's an excellent console plus the weapons power uh, boost that you're getting from that.
Um, and to be honest with you guys, I don't know a lot about this console. Um, I don't have it in here because it's a, it's a low-buy console. Um, the guy I'm doing this for has this. It's part of that set that we're kind of building around. Uh, it gives Tetrion damage, and then there's um, there's um, a set you know bonus from that. He spent a lot of money on it, and we wanted to make sure that we were utilizing this um, or a lot of low-buy on that. And uh, so we want to make sure we're building around it and utilizing it. I, I know it's a good set. I know some of the other high-end guys like Augie and stuff have done... Um, Tetrion builds and they're they're using these things and I would definitely encourage everyone to check out um, Augmented Dictator. Um, he has quite a few um, tons of uh, high-end build videos that are good and uh, he really goes into some good details. So if you're looking for a Tetrion build that's on the extreme high-end, high DPS, uh, definitely go check out Augmented Dictator. Um, okay, so that's pretty much the gear and the potential switch outs for that. Um, or options. I guess let's go over this. So the space set that um, that we're using here, I'm keeping this stuff because um, you know he was showing me the you know some of his resources and it's going to take some time for him to build up additional dilithium and some other things to get what what I would suggest. And what I would suggest, and my kid's not using all of it, but the um, competitive engine um, is great. A lot of your damage output really has to do with you know your piloting and having the ability to get where the bad guys are so you know if, if you say we go into an isa run and you know you're showing up a little bit late to get to the the first group and half of them are dead well that's quite a bit of damage you were unable to uh to deal because there was nothing left to deal it to once you get done with that you're moving over to the left or right depending on you know how you're playing that and again there's time getting from a to b and if other players are getting there before you, then um, there's less things for you to put damage into and your damage output is reduced. Um, not to mention if you need to get away or whatever it may be. So I generally use uh, this engine on all of my builds. Um, and basically anytime I'm clicking a um, firing mode, uh, bridge officer ability, it's going to give you um, quite a big boost uh, to the flight speed, turn rate, defense, um, and uh, cooldown reduction. Um, for tactical bridge officers and this comes in every flavor you can get it for science and for engineering um, most of the builds that I do personally you know are, are tactical damage dealing kinds of things and so I'll even slot stuff um, like I'm, like on my kids build here we're not even running a torpedo and I'm sure let's take a look um, he does not well if this was my build um, I would probably still have a torpedo option in here not because I'm going to fire a torpedo, but it gives me another clicky that's going to give me a really big speed boost. So having options to make my ship move fast and get you know from spot A to spot B is essential to you know putting out good numbers and the way I play, having fun. So and again, all of this is the way I play. It's my suggestion. It's not right. It's not wrong. Um, it's just what I like to do. Um, okay. So next, let's take a look at. Let me hit bridge or let me hit duty officers real quick. So it's going to be pretty minor, but um, oops. There's basically two that I recommend. The rest of it's all going to be based on the way you know you build and what you want to do. Um, so, but the two that I'm recommending are going to be this guy here. And he, anytime you do emergency power to engines, um, it's going to basically cool down your base uh, evasive maneuvers right away um, so you can have a very high uptime on being able to click that again movement is is huge um, so I'll always slot emergency power to engines and I'm I'm sure he has it in here since he has that bridge officer emergency power to yeah, emergency powered engines um, so that'll basically take that off cooldown 100 percent so um, if you view, I have noticed if I'm using it and it, uh, you know, I slow down, um, it generally, if I click emergency power to engines right away, it still gives me like a couple second cooldown on it. Um, but if it's been a few seconds and you click it, um, it's going to uh, cool that down all the way. Um, this is available through the Phoenix packs. Um, and if you don't know, if you go into the, uh, the dilithium store here, let me shrink this down so we can see it if that's possible. 
and you go into special items, you can get uh, Phoenix packs year round now, right from here. Um, and I believe that is uh, off of a rare one. I believe it's a rare one. You can you can get uh, this duty officer from. Uh, so it's cheap. It's pretty easy to get. If um, you know you're opening those boxes here and there, you're you're definitely going to get you know that quality of those. They're not super rare or anything like that. Uh, the other one, and I'm pretty sure he has it. This one is also available in the uh, Phoenix packs, and he is in ground. But his uh, boost uh, does plus five percent all damage to Borg. And uh, he can only be slotted in ground, but this boost works for both space and for ground maps. Um, so it's just an extra little 5% you can put in on uh, your, your ground duty officers here. Um, so it's like adding you know, a whole nother uh, slot there for, uh, for the space, um, active space uh, duty officers. Uh, the rest of it, I mean, that's really just going to depend on what you got. Duty officers can be extremely expensive, um, depending on what you're doing. Um, you know, I just read through them and see, you know, what, what's there that, you know, it's going to potentially be beneficial uh, to me. Try and find things that are less of a chance and more of, uh, you know, if you do this, then this happens. Um, you can't always do that, so you'll just have to go through those and, and look at what uh, you know what's going to work best for you. Again, for specific kind of high-end builds and stuff, th this is very important. It's not really what I do. I try and just kind of help out newer players, anyone that just kind of needs some basic help. So uh, for that kind of thing, again, I'd refer you guys to go check out Augmented Dictator. Uh, so that's Duty Officers. Um, what else we got here? Captains. Um, okay, so these are um, the traits that are available to this guy. I'm going to send him one of these because I didn't see it in his list. Um, so, I mean, these are self-explanatory. These are all stock ones uh, for the personal space traits. This one, Terran, uh, Terran Targeting is what this is. This gives you a 15% uh, critical severity boost. It's huge. It's a little expensive. It's not outrageous compared to some of the other ones, but I'm seeing it on the exchange today for about 15 15 G's, I want to say, um, but if you can save up and get that, it's um, th that's just a huge, huge boost. Uh, the rest of the stuff's pretty self-explanatory. Point, um, point blank is one I would uh, suggest getting. It comes from one of the, I think House, House Peck, is it? No, what is it? And that basically gives you a Cat 2 damage boost based on how far away you are from, from the enemy. Uh, it's a free one mission reward. I would definitely uh, recommend just uh, you know running this mission and getting it. I believe this is it here. Yeah, point blank. Um, so th that's uh, for free. It's uh, it's pretty damn good. All right. Okay, so that is personal space traits, um, starship traits. This is what he has available. I'm not going to go into all the details on these. Um, you just you know, fill in what you got. Um, there, there's all. I mean, there's an endless amount of them. Some of them are extremely expensive. Some of them are just hard to get because they come from promo ships or lockbox ships. But um, this is what I would recommend for him to use. Um, he does not have this one, which is Honor Dead. I'm going to send that over to him. This is basically a survivability trait. Um, and um, yeah, so self explanatory. Uh, same thing again down here, pretty self explanatory. So, critical chance, critical severity. Uh, these two, based on your auxiliary power, are going to give you defense, um, resistance, and also damage output. And then he's running the torpedo up front, so um, I'm going to recommend doing the uh, the torpedo here as well. I think that gives you seven or ten percent, uh, and I believe it's a bonus damage if I remember correctly. Um, so pretty self-explanatory there. Uh, let's go to the next bit. Let's look at skills. Um, I'm just going to kind of scroll through this, and um, you know, you can just take it for what it is. But this is kind of what. Very similar to what I'm using um, on my non ox to bat builds. Um, the big thing that I feel like a lot of people. Here's what I'm finding, okay, is that your shield capacity, your whole capacity, you know, that's all good, right? I mean, the more you got, the more the enemy has to take down. But if they're pounding you, I mean, you know how fast the board can drop your shields and, you know, you start getting some of that kinetic damage on you, um, you know, you're dead pretty quick. Resistance shield hardness 
And those are the things that you can have smaller hull and smaller shields. And if you have huge amounts of resistances, it's way more beneficial. So I would definitely recommend, you know, getting getting the whole plating, uh, energy uh, resistance, and then also your kinetic physical. Um, then I also normally put a couple uh, hits into our uh, points into the uh, shield hardness. So basically what we want to do is not just have a lot of shields or a lot of hull, but we want to make it really hard for those shields and for the hull uh, to be reduced. Um, so I've, I've been really moving more towards resistance um, sides of things than I am, you know, in terms of just trying to get big numbers in my hull, my shield, or even on my regen. Um, some of this stuff doesn't even regen very well at all while you're in combat. So uh, resistance, 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 resistance. Um, let's take a look at my kid's skill tree. It's probably going to be somewhat similar since he asked me about this. Um, so the main thing here. You know, if you're wanting to put out, you know, damage, if you're doing tanking or science, this stuff is going to be different. But if you're, you know, wanting to put out damage, um, and and I have plenty of science characters that are built for damage and don't even do any science. So whatever it is that you're picking uh, in terms of career path that, you know, that doesn't lock you in to, you, you can do anything you want with pretty much any of them. There are some benefits, you know, where you can get some very large, if you're going to do science, I mean, using a science character is definitely better than using the tactical because of some of the, the captain's abilities, but going going in the other direction you know tactical wanting to do tactical with any of the other two it is more than doable you can do very very good numbers with uh with any of those um the main thing i'm looking at here is i want to be able to have you know all these things are important um obviously but i, I want to make sure i'm getting enough into my tactical so i can get the focus fury this is a great boost and then some of the secondary boosts you can get from it are are very good as well um if you're wanting to, you know, put out good amount and good amount of damage, you, you want to have most of this filled in. If you're not using a torpedo, not a big deal. Again, you want to focus more on, you know, whatever. If it's an if it, the whole thing was a torpedo build, then I would definitely do, you know, all of this torpedo and be more focused on that than I would be on my energy weapons. But that's that's not what this is. Um, I'm also finding lately I'm doing a little bit less in terms of targeting and defense. If you're a pvp -er and that's what you're building for, these are vital. Because um, basically the way that these work is your targeting is put up against your enemy's defense. And those two numbers and the ratio between them is calculated to, you know, how many hits am I putting on, uh, on the target. So if I have really, you know, if my enemy has really high defensive rating and I have really low accuracy, most of my hit, you know, my, my shots are going to miss that target. If his defensive rating is really low and my targeting is really high, um, then I'm a lot of my hits are gonna are, are gonna land. I, on my main account, um, you know, I have a super high end DPS, you know, build. I'll take it into PvP and I just get my ass kicked all over the place because yeah, I'm putting out tons of damage, but most of that is not being counted as hitting the target because the people that I've played against have built for PvP and uh, they've built in a way. Um, where defense and accuracy is a focus. The reason I'm saying all that is I can't find any official data on it, but it's my belief that NPCs have next to none of any of them. Um, so on, on my higher end builds, I mean, I'll have, you know, with some of the traits I use and stuff, I'll have negative accuracy and I, you know, will still put out 250,000 DPS in an ISA run. So that leads me to believe that, you know, the, the NPCs don't have much in either one of these so um i'm not going completely zero on them um, i'm just taking two off to use them elsewhere where they could be more useful you still have to fill some of it in um, because i want to be able to get this bar up to at least the level one here of the focus fury if you can get a little in, in you know extra for some of these other things great um it just depends on how you're building and you know what you're doing with the rest of this um so back over here <clears throat> So again, this is pretty self-explanatory. We want speed. I went a little bit higher um, there since we're not using the competitive engine. Uh, we went with uh, you know all the resistance we can get there. Um, we went with the weapons amplification and stabilization. This is basically your base crit chance and crit severity. These need to be filled in all the way. And then our armor shield penetration. Um, and then one of the other big ones is your long range targeting. So the farther away you get from a target, 
uh, the less damage that, that you do. Um, you don't always have control over, you know, where that next target is that you're going to be going after, or, you know, you get, you got to get to them. So you want to start being able to put as much damage on them as quickly as you can, uh, which means, you know, as you're entering range and start firing, you want your shots to do as much damage. So this always, this is one of those ones always needs to just be full. There's uh, other than if you're doing science, I, I don't think this affects science, but I, I really don't know. But, uh, otherwise, this always, 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 always needs to be full. Um, on this, um, we're specking for, um, you know, we want to boost the power levels. And I generally on non-ox to bat, I'm going to put into my, uh, my ox and then into my weapons. Um, I also put one into engines for him because, again, he's not using that um, competitive engine. Some of this, I'm biased because that's what I use. So I feel like since I don't have it, we need to make sure that we're being able to uh, get where we need to go right away. And so I'm trying to find any other way um, to make sure that we're being able to accomplish that. Um, so, and just putting a couple in here. So this will help with some of the science cooldowns, um, like photonic officers and some of the heals. We'll go into the uh, bridge officer uh, abilities here in just a moment. Uh, more power across the board. And um, this affects the cooldown of your tactical uh, bridge officer abilities. Um, so with this fully uh, filled out and with the using Photonic Officer, we should be able to keep most of the firing modes up like 90, 95% of the time. Um, and we'll go over that here next. Um, so let's take a look at Bridge Officer Abilities. All right. Emergency power to engines, and again, that's to complement the duty officer that we put in. Every time we use this, it's going to take evasive uh, maneuvers all the way down to zero and make it ready to use again. So that's a cooldown for that. Um, and I'm just going to cover engineering first. Um, so we just got some heals, and then emergency power to weapons. This is a must, must, must have. Um, if I only had one slot that was engineering on this whole ship, it'd be emergency power to weapons. Uh, the boost from that is is big, and if you're using um, uh, what is it damage? There's, there's some uh, engineering duty officers that would uh, help keep this up, um, and I can't think of it off the top of my head. But um, in any case, you, you you want to make sure that you are uh, you're using this ability. Uh, if you can get three, three is great, but it's 16% bonus damage. Um, that is massive. I mean, that's almost like adding two locators um, or two tactical consoles to your ship um, for that period of time that uh, that this is up. Um, so let's talk tactical consoles. We're running a torpedo up front, so we got the spread. Um, we have debuff uh, target, upgrading our weapons here with uh, attack pattern beta. Beam overload three. Uh, we have the omnidirectional on the back. He also does have the... Uh, dual beam bank from the lobby set that he's using diffuse tetrion dual beam so you could you know work that in if you wanted to in the meanwhile and also get some additional benefit out of this um, and then um, scatter volley uh, three since it's mainly cannons um, it's kind of how i built this around for him this is going to be you know your damage dealer right here so I, I if you go with cannons and not that dual B bank, um, you, you're gonna get more damage out of that. So I would recommend staying with the cannons, but in the meanwhile, if you need to purchase those or get them, play with it, put it in there, see what you like. Um, and also, I, I'm sure most of you gathered this, but this is a forward facing you know, fighting ship. So you wanna keep the nose pointed towards um, your, uh, your target. Um, all the weapons on the ship, all the back weapons will all fire forward as well. Uh, we have tactical team, and let's talk uh, science. Um, so some of this I just started kind of filling in. There are some other really good uh, ones like structural analysis, and that'll do a uh, damage debuff. It's a little pricey on the exchange. I think it's about six million. Uh, if you work that in, that's good. There's also some great uh, winter event ones. Uh, what is it? It's very cold in space. Um, you could use that as well if you have some of the uh, the Christmas uh, decorations or ornaments. Um, so you could really kind of, you know, science team, I don't use much. I mean, you could really kind of switch out quite a few of these. I would definitely keep your hazard emitters. Um, polarized hole is pretty good. 
Um, this, along with uh, with Torpedo, is is pretty good. And that also comes from a mission reward, which is in the Iconian arc. And sorry, I'm just going to kind of look through this again. The Iconian arc has uh, quite a few good things in it. I don't think it's time in a bottle, is it? Oh, you know what? I think I know what it is. Destabilizing resonance. Um, so this is a uh, this is a good one here. So once you open this up, it'll also allow you to craft them as well. They are account bound. You can't craft them and sell them, so they're not available on the exchange. The only way to get it is to do Blood of the Ancients. Um, but that's definitely a good one to put in there as well. Um, so let's talk about Photonic Officer. This is something that I found a while back, um, and it's extremely valuable. I, I actually have a, uh, a video on this. I'll, uh, I'll link it in the description. It just talks about the mechanics of how this works. Um, on my kid's ship here, he can only fit a Photonic Officer 1, but um, basically the Photonic Officer 2 is um, going to be a 3% reduction. So when I first looked at this initially, I heard some people talking about it. I looked at it and I said, well, 2% reduction, who cares? Um, so, but that's not exactly what it says. It says that it reduces the recharge of bridge officers by 2% each second. Um, so what I found is prior to this, people were using copies of things. So for instance, on this build that we're doing, they might be using uh, Cannon Scatter Volley 3 and maybe 2. And so using that global cooldown, they'd click this guy, they'd start using it, and that would cool this down to you know, 20, 15 seconds, whatever it may be. And then by the time this was off uh, cooldown, you'd click that, and that would bump this one back down a little bit. So you could kind of rotate between them um, and, and use them to cool each other down. There was some additional bridge officer or uh, duty officers that you could get that would help with that as well. Um, Photonic Officer gets rid of that. So the testing that I did on it, um, it basically will do at Photonic Officer 1 the exact same thing, or at 2 or 3, it'll do even better. So you do not need to use copies anymore. If you can get at least a Photonic Officer 1 in there, that is going to take, take care of cooldowns at least to the degree that using copies of the same ability uh, did. Uh, so this is huge. If, I, uh, if I'm not using Ox to Bat... I am using Photonic Officer. Some people will mix the two. So on a ship like this particular one, using Ox to Bat with two auxiliaries to batteries is not possible because you have to be in, you have to have two lieutenant uh, stations in order to do that. So in this instance, I've seen like, again, Augie on some of his builds, he'll use an Ox to Bat and then also a Photonic Officer. So Photonic Officer will cool down the Ox to Bat. Uh, the one, as opposed to the two cooling each other down as well as all your other abilities. Um, so far, I cannot find anything whatsoever that will cool down Photonic Officer any faster. So a second Photonic Officer will not have an effect on the other copy. Um, from what I can tell, it's hardwired. It's a 30 second cooldown on it, so you'll have, you'll have 10 seconds of it not cooling everything else down faster. Um, there, there's even the photonic um, off. Uh, what is it? The um, there's a duty officer that uh, says it cools it down. Um, it does not. It, it the the tooltip is is not correct. It does not cool down photonic officer. The only thing that you can do to buff this is improve photonic officer, uh, which is a trait from a um, low buy ship. Um, okay, so that's. Uh, Bridge officer abilities, what are we missing? I think that's pretty much everything. Yep, I think that's pretty much everything. So I um, hope this is helpful uh, to the person I'm making it for and anybody else watching it. Um, I apologize, I do like to ramble on and this is kind of a, a mess <laughs> in the way I have it set up here, but um, um, yeah, this is just kind of some of the basics. Um, you know, again, the main thing you know, especially if you're new, just starting out, um, when you're when you're building a ship, I don't care if it's in game, not in game, you're going through, you know, the storyline, whatever it may be, stay with the same exact type of weapons, um, and I I mean energy type at least. Uh, torpedoes, unless you're doing a torpedo build, you do not need more than one torpedo. Um, 
a lot of my builds I won't even have one they do make me feel good I do like having them but you're just gonna you're gonna see if you parse your stuff you're gonna see every weapon on the ship for the most part is gonna outform your your torpedoes there are definitely some good uses for them especially on you know some of them with their particular procs or damage over time you know abilities things like that so there's definitely a place for them um, if you have a ship that has a lot of tactical slots um, you know and you need to fill that with you know the abilities that are actually usable like you know torpedo spread then you know put one in there but you do not need more than one um, and if you're not going to have it on the front of your ship you know it, it's your pro and again this depends on your play style but you know on a build like this that we're looking at this is a forward facing ship obviously we you know it, it needs to be on the front so um, in any case uh, like subscribe if you have any questions uh, just throw them down there do my best to um, answer them for you at least point you in the right direction all right, guys, have a good one. Appreciate it.